Hello, today we are doing chapter three, section four in algebra one. Our essential question is, how can you describe the graph of the equation ax plus by equals c? This is a linear line in standard form. A little bit of background information. This is always a tough one for students to remember, and it's one that you're just going to have to buckle down and memorize. If you have y equals some number, y equals 4, y equals 3, y equals 2, it is a horizontal line. Even though y is your axis that goes up and down, you're going to have a horizontal line. Because the reason is it doesn't matter what your value of x is, y is staying constant. Therefore, you're going to have a horizontal line. So y equals some number is always going to be a horizontal line. If you have x equals some number, x equals 1, x equals 2, x equals negative 3, it's going to be a vertical line. It's going to go up and down. Make sure you have those concepts memorized. So if I wanted to graph that, y equals 4. As soon as I see that, I realize, hey, that is a horizontal line. And what I typically do is just put a dot at 4, and it doesn't really matter what my x values are, y is going to be 4, so it's going to be a horizontal line. On part b, x equals negative 2. As soon as I see x equals some constant, I know it's going to be a vertical line. So I usually put a dot at my, on my x-axis. Here would be at negative 2. And if you, what they've done here is they've just gone up a couple, gone down a couple. I don't even put extra dots. I just draw a vertical line at this point. All right. Hit pause. Try these two on your own. When you're ready, check your answer. Number one, it's going to be a horizontal line passing through y equals negative 2.5. Number two, vertical line at x equals 5. All right. This is going to be an important concept. You'll probably want to pause and write some of this information down. Your x-intercept, that's where it crosses your x-axis. And it occurs when y is 0. Your y-intercept, that's where it crosses your y-axis. And that happens when x is 0. So to find the x-intercept, you let y equal 0 and solve for x. To find the y-intercept, let x equal 0 and solve for y. This is important. Hit pause. Make sure you have that down in your notes. So let's go ahead. And we're going to use our intercepts to graph the equation 3x plus 4y equals 12. Well, I need to find those intercepts. So to get the x-intercept, substitute 0 in for y and solve for x. And I get x equals 4. To find the y-intercept, 0 in for x, solve for y. y equals 3. So now I'm going to plot those points. My points are 0, 3 and 4, 0. Draw a line through those two points. Hey, guess what? We just graphed a line. So here, to find your x-intercept, you're going to let y equal 0. Sometimes I'll even just cover it up. And then to find your, your y-intercept, you're going to let x equal 0. And again, you could just cover that up. Go ahead, hit pause. Try these two on your own. When you think you're ready to check your answers, hit play. Yeah, my x-intercept is going to be 2. Because I would ignore that. I could cover that y up and get 2x equals 4, x equals 2. My y-intercept is at negative 4. Cover up that 2x, divide by negative 1. Here, to find my 
x-intercept, y is 0, you get x equals negative 9. Find your y-intercept, let x equal 0, and you get negative 3. All right, let's do a word problem. You are planning an awards banquet for your school. You need to rent tables to seat 180 people. Tables come in two sizes. Six, small tables seat six people, and large tables seat 10 people. The equation 6x plus 10y equals 180 models the situation, where x is the number of small and y is the number of large tables. We want to graph the equation and interpret the intercepts. Find four possible solutions in the context of a problem. So, understand the problem. We're given an equation, we're asked to graph it, and find the intercepts, and then find four solutions. That means four points on that graph. So, my plan, graph. And I want to graph this very neatly and accurately. So, let's go ahead and solve it. We can't have negative x or y because you can't have a negative um, amount of people or tables. So, to find my y-intercept, I let x equal 0, and I get y equals 18. To find my x-intercept, I let y equal 0, and I get x equals 30. So those are my intercepts. So the x-intercepts show that you can rent 30 small tables. If you don't do any large, the y-intercept shows that you can rent 18 large tables if you do not do any small tables. The chances are we're going to do kind of a combination. And we have to do whole numbers if we're going to do combinations. So I would look along that graph and find out where you have points that are crossing at hash marks. Here at 10, 12 here at 20 comma 6. So those are different solutions as well. So there are four possible solutions. The intercepts and the two that we found where it was crossing at hash marks. What if you decide to rent tables from a different company? This situation can be modeled by 4x plus 6y equals 180, where x is the number of small and y is the number of large. Tell you what, why don't you try doing this one on your own and see how you do. Here, we could the x-intercept shows that you could have rent 45 small. The y-intercept shows you that you could do 30 large and 0 small. Hope you enjoyed. As always, you're welcome to come into Math Lab or iPass.